Thank you very much. Um, uh, seen on Twitter today, uh, man goes to the doctor. I'm addicted to Twitter, he says. The doctor says, I'm sorry, I don't follow you. Anyway, just more proof, <laughs> more proof of how wonderful this social media world is. Um, I am not going to give you uh, advice on using social media in business. Shock horror. A, because I'm not an expert on that, and B, because if I was, I'd want some money for it. Um, then there are plenty of um, witch doctors out there, a huge industry of them flogging that stuff. What I'm going to just quickly try and give you is um, some picture of my social media experience, how it's become an essential tool for me. Um, and I think uh, the only way that you'll be able to integrate this into your businesses is if you're a very enthusiastic user yourself, experiment with it, work out what works for you. Um, I really got heavily into social media because I ended up doing a piece for the Today program on whether I was too old to join Facebook in 2007, <laughs> uh, which was a fabulous experience because somebody set up a group when I complained about a lack of friends, um, and um, uh, I got thousands of friends. And I remember going upstairs. I also joined MySpace at the same time. I went upstairs and said to my son, who was then about 15, oh, look, boy, look, I've got a friend on MySpace. And he said, Dad, that's Tom. He's everybody's friend on MySpace. Um, I quickly, uh, though, decided uh, after a while that Twitter was going to be the more useful tool as a journalist. I've just had a quick look and found, though, my first tweets, just to show how much of a learning process this is. There is a service where you can find out your first tweets. Mine were in March 2007, pretty early adopter. Um, I, I'm tweeting, weather grey, hope it does not rain at Lords where I am spending the day. A little later, Dull but dry, a bit like Twitter. God, this guy's dull. And finally, a classic English day at Lord's. Collingwood has just got his century, and I am only slightly pissed. Um, <laughs> two huge mistakes, which I would later learn. You know, I am a BBC reporter. We have gradually got to grips with social media, and I, frankly, my mistakes have fed into our policies. Um, and we'll, we now... We now have, I mean, I've always said, do not say on social media anything that you would not be happy to say on air on Five Live. Um, we keep making mistakes, but we're grasping our way forwards. Uh, and it's, it's a process of, of experimentation. What I quickly found uh, was that first Facebook and then Twitter became essential journalistic tools um, in three different ways, really. Um, I'm just looking at a tweet here. Uh, from 2008, quite early, May 2008, just reported an earthquake in Beijing. Wonder how large it is. Off to check out the USGS site. That's by a, a, a tweeter and blogger called Robert Scoble, Scobleizer. Uh, he was the first person to report the massive Chinese earthquake. I got up in the morning, saw that on Twitter, rang my news desk, which is supposedly a fairly efficient news desk. They didn't know about the earthquake in China. It came out of Twitter first. And that was my first indication of how powerful that could, all, that, that, that could be. Um, then, very quickly, I began to see its, uh, its use as um, a news gathering machine. Um, so I went, uh, I got called one day by the editor of the 10 o'clock news to say there's a story uh, come out of Boston, Massachusetts, about a new form of battery. Can you do me a piece for tonight's 10 o'clock news? A new form of battery that will last three times as long. Christ, I thought, I know nothing about batteries. There are no pictures. What am I going to do? So I went to Twitter and said, help. Anyone know anything about batteries? And very quickly, I had two, two tweets. I had um, uh, a professor of chemistry at Bath University. Their PR person was on Twitter. Uh, happened to be following me. I rushed off and interviewed him. And a futurologist, a guy called Peter Cochran, uh, who was made available for interview. Quickly, I began to see this is a brilliant news-gathering resource. But the other thing it has been, um, for me in particular, and I think um, this is a sort of wi wider lesson for all of you, is a fantastic means of self-promotion. Um, uh, I... Uh, people are... Oh, people... You quickly learn that, yes, there's a lot of dross on Twitter, people talking about what the weather's like at Lords. But what, that, what is extraordinarily valuable um, about this and other 
uh, uh, media is is links links to uh, useful information. So um, I link every time uh, I write a blog post. I I, uh, I link to every interesting article I see. Um, uh, I break news on Twitter. Uh, you know, new press releases come in. Um, I stick a link in, put them out there. That all creates a sort of uh, a brand, frankly, for myself and for the BBC's journalism. Um, and uh, I think that's what we're all we're all getting to grips with the sheer power of this medium. Uh, and and as I said, for for people within um, my organisation, it's been quite a steep. Uh, learning curve because uh, we're learning that there are some things that you can share and some things that you shouldn't share. A BBC boss about two years ago uh, sent a public message uh, uh, revealing who had been appointed and who had failed to be appointed to some top jobs and he got into the sun as a, um, a Twitter twit or something like that. Um, so we're, we are all gradually coming to grips with it. Um, but I've, I've just spent, as, as you've heard, um, the last few months looking back into the history of this phenomenon and trying to work out uh, what takes off and what doesn't. We trace the phenomenon of social networking right back to the 1970s when hippies and hackers got together in California. Uh, the very first network, we think, was uh, a computer terminal placed in a record store in Berkeley. Uh, by some guys who invited other people to come round and type messages into the computer. Uh, they thought people would hate this idea because uh, in the counterculture of those days, computers were something owned by the man, the military-industrial complex. You shouldn't go near them. But in fact, people were charmed by the idea that they could actually use a computer. And quickly, a little network built around this one terminal in this record store. And what was the, one of the first things that happened on there? A discussion about where the best bagels were to be had in town. So possibly the first business use of social media, 1973, Berkeley. Um, we have seen, um, obviously, over the last two or three years, a massive acceleration in that. Um, and I would have just a few words of caution. There are an awful lot of businesses that come on to uh, places like Facebook and Twitter with incredibly unsubtle approaches. Um, uh, stuff akin to spam. Try and remember that it is supposed to be an arena for conversation. Um, and if you can give a bit of information too, but you've got to give a bit more than that. Um, I'm finding that some brands are getting savvy about this. Um, I uh, Every time I've got a a technical issue of my own or a query for um, people to come to me. I go onto Twitter and there are some brands uh, smart enough to realise that, um, you know, approaching people through that forum is now, now the way to go. Uh, there are others who feel it's the place to advertise their latest special offers and beat the drum, and I think um, that doesn't work. Um, but what I would say, what I would come back to once again, is um, the sheer enjoyment of this new form of communication. Um, I have become, frankly, a Twitterholic. I had a very shocking experience the other day. Wired magazine ran this stunt whereby they uh, sent individual journalists a cover of their magazine, which had a big feature about privacy, with a whole lot of information about themselves. <laughs> on it, uh, and mine had my birthday, what I'd got as a birthday present, um, the ages of my uh, kids and various other information. And I was shocked and horrified and turned to my wife and said, how has this happened? And she said, do you read your own Twitter? <laughs> you know, as long as you don't put our bank account number out there. But um, despite all those dangers, I do feel that um, uh, it has been an extremely rewarding process for most people, the change in their lives that's come uh, through the encroachment of social media. I get, I've, I spent two hours uh, on the radio this morning talking to local radio stations about it, and time and time again, I came up against the, but isn't it destroying conversation? 
but isn't it unsafe? But isn't it, isn't it sad that, you know, we don't talk to each other anymore? That was said about... By the way, that's my timer telling me I've had my ten minutes. Um, that was said uh, about every new form of technology, about uh, the telephone, about television, uh, about email. Um, we have to accept it's there, it's not going to go away, there are going to be more social networks, um, and I think we've all got to learn our etiquette and how to use them well. Sorry, my time's up. Thank you very much. <laughs>